For more on artificial intelligence and the conference, we're joined by Andy Mok, live from Beijing. He's a senior research fellow at the Center for China and Globalization. Welcome back to the program. Great, great to be back. So, uh, Friday is day two of the World Artificial Intelligence Conference. What cutting-edge AI applications are you seeing so far uh, that excite you the most? Well, I think AI across the board is a tremendously exciting development. And in particular, I think one area that's very, very important and will be uh, profoundly game-changing is in the area of mobility. So yesterday, the CEO of Baidu, Robin Lee, I think shared two very interesting statistics, that a 50% increase in transportation efficiency will lead to four points of greater GDP growth. So, of course, uh, a growing economy is a good thing. But more importantly, most auto accidents, and I think every 20 seconds someone dies in an auto accident, are caused by human error. So in a world where we are relying on fully autonomous vehicles, uh, that this could have a very big impact, not just on the economy, but on uh, actual human lives. So I think these kinds of developments are very exciting, and there are many, many more. I, th I love that point about transportation leading to economic growth. It's quite thought-provoking. Uh, also from this conference was released the Global AI Innovation Index Report. And it shows China closing in on the AI race, right now dominated by the US, but China not far behind. How do you think the AI industry is uh, transforming China? Well, I think uh, it certainly is transforming China. And China is transforming the AI industry as well. So we see here, uh, it used to be that uh, all the important advances uh, in technology happen in the United States. There's a joke now that if you want to know what Amazon is going to be doing in a couple of years, look at what Chinese tech companies are doing today. And I think what this shows is the size and the speed at which the market develops here, but also the innovative capacity of Chinese companies, whether we're looking at hardware and 5G like Huawei, to true AI-based uh, software products like TikTok and Douyin, um, and even uh, data collection, uh, data storage uh, is also critical for AI. And we're seeing China advancing, pushing the envelope, leading in a lot of these areas. And, uh, you know, who is actually taking then the lead in helping to grow the industry? Uh, is it the public or the private sector or is there a synergy? Because there's so much, right? We're talking about new infrastructure, research, even cultivating a talent pool. Absolutely. So we think about this as a value chain. It all starts with talented, highly trained people. And these people then have to develop the technologies, whether we're talking about hardware, software, and again, uh, data collection, data storage. These have to be then turned into products and services uh, that then have real world impact, whether that's greater economic efficiency, whether that's saving lives, whether that's improving uh, education, closing the digital divide, meaning allowing everyone at all levels of society, access to the fruits of this AI revolution uh, really, I think, takes, as you said, synergy. Uh, but that synergy, I think, really starts with government. And it's wise policies, political will, and implementation ability. And I think we've seen across the board China's government uh, able to deliver in a number of areas, uh, whether that's public health, whether that's responding to financial crises, uh, so I think we're also seeing some developments in AI as well.